and appendicitis first hit me on the north coast of New Guinea, night, <laughs> again, outpost. This time I was on the farthest east outpost at night with two other guys, dark as a son of a gun, and I get hit with appendicitis. And boy, I'll tell it was misery because the appendicitis, you get the runs. And man, you're just going and going and going. It's terrible. And I couldn't stop. And I was in misery. The other two guys there didn't know what the heck to do for me. And believe it or not, the only communication we had was sound power. When you're a kid, you had two tin cans with a string across, that's it. They had one of those. It went down the coast to the next guys that were down in a foxhole. They had one. They put the two together and the sound would go down to the next one. And those guys had a power one, a crank one. And a hook up to that. And they were able to talk to a doctor way back somewhere in a the jungle there. And I talked to the jungle on all of this and told them where I hurt and all of this at. And he says, well, it sounds like appendicitis to me. You'll just have a sweat it out. And in the morning, we'll have a small boat come down, and pick you up, which they did. And they took me to a GI hospital back up the coast somewhere. And I remember it was by that time, it was probably around two o'clock in the afternoon when I got back to the hospital. And um, doctor looked at me and felt me all over and everything and says, yeah, I think that's what you got, all right. You better find a spot somewhere and bunk up with anybody you know, you know, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning I go back to the medics, different medic, different doctor. The other guy, I don't know where he went, probably dead tired, he went to sleep. So next doctor looks at me, says, I don't find anything wrong with you. Back to duty. So I did. I went back to my unit and I was back on patrol again. And that, la that lasted about, uh, well, maybe another month before it really hit again. And then this time they sent me back to a bigger hospital in the jungle. And they sent me down to Townsville by airplane. And that's where they found out and then operated on me. So, isn't it a strange thing? He you got appendicitis and next day you come back, no symptoms. <laughs> From there, a lot of things developed. All of these jungle diseases started hitting me. And I had about five or six different kinds of them. And uh, they were laying me low until finally uh, uh, they were gonna strip me down to uh, Sydney to a big, big general hospital down there, which they did. We landed in the Brisbane River. And when we came down and landed, boy, there was these big ships and everything were passing. They had big battleships there, aircraft carriers, everything. And we were going past them. And we land and we come up to an area where there's a jetty coming out in the river. And uh, the tide's out, the dock is high. And they put us in a small boat and we're coming up to this dock, and I look and I see this fellow in a big cowboy hat and a trench coat standing on the end of the pier, and I'm wondering, who the heck is he? And so I had to climb up the ladder to the pier, and I took a look, and it was John Wayne. But I get aboard, aboard the plane, and the guy sitting right next to me on the right is John Wayne. And we have a little small talk, the plane takes off, and after we get up there, it's uh, kind of quiet, you know, flight, but we're talking, and finally, a couple of the guys said, hey, uh, can we get some cards or something to have a little poker game? So the steward brought out a card table and some cards, and by golly, me and two other guys played cards with John Wayne. I don't remember if I lost or not, <laughs> if I won, but it was really something, nice guy, very nice guy. I had an interesting thing happen 
I was on a uh, hospital train being sent from uh, Los An from uh, San Francisco um, to Chicago. And um, we went through the mountains in, um, I'm not quite sure where it was, North, uh, Northern California, going into um, Arizona, Northern Arizona, uh, somewhere coming through there. And it was at night, and it was in February, and there was snow all over the mountains and everything. Mm -hmm. And we're going along, and I'm in a bunk laying down, and I had the window where I could look out, the moon was shining in the snow, it was really pretty. And all of a sudden, the whole train just shook. And what happened was that the door between coaches opened up ahead of me and a ward boy came flying through hollering for doctors. And what happened was that a snow slide had come down, hit the side of the train, the coach ahead of me, broke all the windows on that side of the train. All these guys are laying in bunks. All of a sudden they're covered in snow and glass. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a problem there with a train with broken windows. Now what do you do with these fellas? You got to put them somewhere. And so they had to squeeze places on other coaches and everything and move these guys around. But uh, some of them got cut up with the glass and some didn't. Scared the hell out of the ward boy. So. <laughs> but it was really something to feel the movement on the side of the train when this thing hit. Wow. Train never stopped. It just kept on going. Wow. Yeah.